Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Thank you for coming by. Tonight I'm going to be making a card with Blue Night Rubber Stamps and Pan Pastels. The card that I'm going to be making uses this stamp. It's called Mountains with Mist. I've already stamped it out before we started and I also will be using a sentiment from the Blue um, Bible Verse 2 and I'll be using some birds from Birds 2. Alright, so we have the card already stamped and I'm going to be using pan pastels if you're not familiar with pan pastels I have made a couple other videos about pan pastels previously they are highly pigmented artist grade pastels and they're in a pan the company that makes them is called pan pastels and they're based out of Pennsylvania and I started using them a couple weeks ago through Blue Night Rubber Stamps when I was on their design team as a guest. And I've been very pleased with these and very pleased with the results. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. Now this, this is the um, Mountains in the Mist. And this reminds me of the Blue Ridge Mountains. So I live in Western Pennsylvania, but two years ago traveled to um, North Carolina and Tennessee, and we went through the Blue Ridge Mountains, and they are just beautiful. I mean, where I live in Pennsylvania, we have mountains, and they're very pretty, but there was just something about the Smoky Mountains, uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains. The, um, the trip that we took was a lot of fun. We got to tour Biltmore, which is the Vanderbilt Mansion in North Carolina. I forget the name of the town right now. It escapes me. And it sets like way on top of the mountain. And then when you go from North Carolina to Tennessee, then you're following the um, Great Smoky Mountain area and there's the great in Tennessee where we stayed was Pigeon Forge and that's near we stayed in Sevierville which is by the way where Dolly Parton grew up and where she lived before she became a star and Dolly Parton's influence can be seen throughout the entire community of Sevierville and Pigeon Forge not only does she have Dollywood, which is a really cool amusement park that we got to visit. But she has lots of other sort of things that um, you can see there. Well, she's got a, a hotel resort. And I'm sure there's other things since we've been there two years ago. But you I mean you can definitely tell that she's had a lot of a hand in helping that community to basically flourish under you know I mean it is tourism type jobs but um you know and hopefully other things will be I mean I don't know I don't know that much about the economy there so I'm not going to act like I'm an expert on it but I just know that I can tell that she has given back to her community so um anyways besides Dolly Parton um we stayed at this beautiful cabin in the mountains and um, what really took my breath away was the Blue Ridge Parkway. Oh my goodness. Um, you would be driving, we were driving up the mountain, and then all of a sudden there'd be a lookout and the most beautiful, beautiful mountains. And this reminds me of the, them. So I'm hoping that I can create a card that you know helps me to remember the Blue Ridge Mountains. Now they say that um, other mountains are more more beautiful in Alaska. I don't see myself ever getting to Alaska. You know, maybe someday, but I doubt it. So I'm really thrilled that I had the opportunity to go to Pigeon Forge and I would go back there again. Actually, my family and I have been talking about going there again next year. We're not going on vacation this year, but I'm hoping next year we can. And I think that that might be where we go. And um, I would like to stay again in Sevierville in a cabin. Yeah, they have campgrounds there too if you like to camp. But, I mean, I'll camp as long as I'm staying in a cabin. So, that's really not camping, I know. But, 
there you have it. That's what I, that's my speed. So in case you're wondering, I'm using the chromium dioxide green and I'm just taking, this is just a very cheaply made cosmetic brush. I'm just dipping it in and taking the tip and just outlining some of the brushes, some of the, some of the branches on these pine trees, evergreens, trying to make it so that you can actually look at it and say, oh, you know, those are trees and they have branches. It's not just the big green blob on the card. Now, um, Pan Pastels does make a special tool that's that's shaped like a eye makeup applicator. It's not an eye makeup applicator. It's specially made for Pan Pastels. I just have to order some. Haven't had a chance to yet. So if you don't like watching tutorial videos, this probably isn't going to be your cup of tea. Just warn you ahead of time because I'm going to be making and explaining as I go along basically the um, techniques that I'm using and the colors that I'm using, the tools that I'm using. It's going to be very detailed te technical video. Okay, it's not going to be a quick, you know, voiceover. I know a lot of people really do not enjoy watching videos of techniques. I love watching videos of techniques. It's how I learn. It's how I can grow. It's how I can, you know, basically try new techniques on my own. It's almost as if you're taking an art class when you're watching new techniques. And it's on YouTube, so it's free. All right, I think you're getting the sense here that this is actually like the forest and there are trees here. Okay. I'm just looking at the original artwork here to make sure that I'm not overlooking any trees that need to be outlined. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I used a gray ink to stamp this. I use Memento Gray, gray flannel by Memento. When I stamped it with a darker, I'll show you, I, here it is. At, at first I stamped it with the um, Versafine Claire Twilight, and I think that's beautiful. I think that's a standalone card base right there. I don't think it needs anything except to be trimmed, put on a card face, and add a sentiment. This is gorgeous. I don't think this needs to be altered in any way. So when I stamped it with that, I thought, no, that's too, it's, it's just beautiful the way it is. It wouldn't take well to pan pastels. And then I stamped it with black, and I thought it was great, but I thought it might be too dark, and I didn't think that my, um, my pan pastels that I put on would, would show. So then I went with like a gray, okay. All right, now that I have my basic trees, I'm just going to blend a little bit down here in the corner. I have a lot of extra pigment sort of loose here. Yeah, I really wanted to use this green. I think it's a really nice color green. I didn't want to dilute it any with white. I want it to be really strong green. Thank you. 
It's okay that I'm going off the side here. I'm going to be trimming this anyways. So it's perfectly okay. All right, now we will move on to our mountains. And I have my <clears throat> tools here my knives and I have my wedge, a couple different wedges here that I could use. These all are official softy tools from Pan Pastels. These are specially designed sponges. Um, unlike a cosmetic sponge, these sponges do not absorb the Pan Pastels. So you're actually getting the product applied to your base of material and not it's not being soaked into the actual cosmetic sponge like this cosmetic sponge you know the actual pan pastels goes in there and sticks this these softy tools were specially made so that it it uh, doesn't absorb but it like lays on there okay what I first want to do is take the turquoise and using this square uh, go ahead and just get some up on the tur turquoise right on the tip of my blender and I want to apply it along the top of these mountains because I want them to be the lightest blue and this tool allows you to go straight up and down and really create a nice edge when you're getting in and um, applying it to those type of spaces. Just getting as close as I can to the mountain tops without going over into the white. If you do go over, it's okay because pan pastels are erasable. Not sure if you knew that or not, but for example, here I will purposefully go over and then I'll grab my eraser. Okay, this is a white eraser. And it removes what I just put on that spot. So that really makes it nice. Okay, that's one of the coolest things I think. Think about it when you're using inks, like distress oxides and stuff, you can't go in and erase it. And these tools are very lightweight. I really like using them. I don't have to press really hard. You know, I have arthritis in my hands, so when the pan pastels came along, I was really excited because with distress oxides, I really get tired of blending after a while. And then I wake up the next morning and my wrist and stuff hurt and everything. Not with pan pastels. They're def definitely an easier to use medium. Now, here with these mountains, I'm going to, these are the darkest mountains right here. So I'm going to use the um, ultramarine blue. I think this is the ultramarine blue and I think that's the phthalo blue. And I'm gonna take the ultramarine blue and do the same thing here along these mountain ridges down here. I want these to be the darkest of them this will be a sort of an evening type card. It's not going to be full daylight. This will probably be a card at dusk. Let's put it to you that way. The Blue Ridge Mountains at dusk. There you go. Now I have a little bit of gray already pre-blended on this softy head. I was using it earlier. I was taking some black and some white together and creating some gray. I'm just gonna tap that down on here.
And then taking the same softy tool that I was using earlier, just blend that in. Like I said, this bottom part will be trimmed, so I'm not worried about going over into the white space. Okay, then our next range here of mountains, or our next height of mountains, will be dark, but not quite as dark as this, except for over here, I would say it's exactly the same. So let's start with the corner here. I hope I'm going, I hope I'm staying, staying on screen, and I hope that I'm close enough that you can see here what I'm doing. I'm going to take that same brush or softy tool and just go over this mountain right here. You see that my tool still has a lot of pigment on it. Once you load these up, there's a lot of pigment that lasts for a long time. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to drag this up here so it's not such a dark line. I could also use this tool and do the same thing. This has different um, edges. Oh, that's looking nice. Okay, now this in between I already started. I might as well just go ahead, and this probably still has some ink, um, pan pastels on it from before, and it does. The pan pastels really hold when you first put them on, um, you can rub off with a uh, microfiber towel and then you could dip into a different color. You don't have to worry about them being like completely washed with water and soap, but eventually you do want to wash them with water and soap, but um, you can just rub it onto a microfiber towel. And if you don't have that, just a paper towel. Okay, so now our final ridge, I kind of like this, um, process that I'm doing. I think I'm just going to continue it because I think it's looking pretty good. I'm going to use the phthalo blue at the top, drag it down, and then I can go in with some of the gray. Drag it down. Add some of this gray. And blend. There is a colorless blender that I purchased with my, uh, these two sets of pan pastels, but I don't think I need it for this project. All right. Um, so the, these two palettes, I know you can't see the other one, it's off the screen, but the two palettes that I purchased, they were $49.99 each from Blue Knight Rubber Stamps. And you also receive a pack of tools. And, and your tools include one of these rounded knives with two um, of the softy tools. You get one of these rounds, you get a, a, a square rectangular one. So you get a nice startup of tools. And then I purchased these ones separately. Um, these were just some another set that I had purchased um, separately. And I just keep all my tools in a old box here. Um, yeah, so they're easy to store because they're in a palette. And I think that Blue Knight Rubber Stamps has done a really nice job of pulling together some colors to get you started. Let me take a drink here. I would not have known which colors to pick out. So I'm so thankful that 
Blue Knight Rubber Stamps has done that legwork. Okay. Like they have a nice palette. The palette closes and keeps your pastels protected. All right. Now we're going to work on the sky. Okay, and this will be our nighttime sky. Not nighttime, but dusk. Okay, let me see here. This is blended. Just want to make sure I have everything blended well. I'm just taking a cosmetic sponge and just blending a little bit. Oh, my, I'm already at 20 minutes. Sorry. I try to make these shorter. And I want you to know that sometimes my YouTube, uh, when I'm recording, it just shuts off automatically. Sometimes at 30 minutes, sometimes at 45 minutes. I don't know why it does that. It just has a mind of its own sometimes. So if suddenly it ends and you're like, okay, what happened? I would really like to see the end of this card. I will have it posted on my blog, uh, thehopefulcrafter.blogspot.com and on Instagram, Schultz551. So you can always find finished products and photos there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of this magenta. And I have a tool I have one of these softy tools that I started with the magenta. And I want to, I'll show you how I do it. I don't necessarily start blending right away. I kind of just like cut across. I make these little cuts. And that's what I call them, little dashes. Okay, like some people just automatically will start blending. And, and this is just what I have found that I like to do, all right? Then I'm gonna grab some purple. Okay, it's also actually called violet. Okay, just go ahead and make some dashes. I want to. I don't want to get that close to the mountain ridge. I, I didn't mean to get that so close there. You know what? Here we go. We can just erase it away. I want to have to make sure I have a little bit of space here so that it's a gradual... I don't want it to be right up against the mountain. I want it to be, you'll see. I have a vision in my brain that I can't exactly explain it, but I do. I'm gonna go back over these with some turquoise since I erased a little bit. And our night sky is going to be sort of dusk. Back to violet. And what's nice is I've got magenta on one side, violet on the other, so. And this used to be what I was using for orange, and you can tell that you can't see any orange. I All I did was rub the sponge off of the microfiber towel, got rid of that orange color, so I could use, use it for magenta and purple. Which, by the way, look awesome together. I think they look really nice together. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and find my rectangle. There's my rectangle here. I like this for blending. Just for whatever reason, it just feels most comfortable in my hand. And I'm using... You could use either end, but I'm going to use this end right now. I'm going to switch to the other end. Yeah, I like the other. I like the square end for some reason. That's just me. Oh, that's looking very pretty for a sky. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay. I'm just taking an basically whatever I'm dragging down is making a softer I don't want it to be so harsh up against the mountain range I want it to be I want it to have some color there I'm not completely white but I want it to be more like of a lighter color okay all right so then I might add a little bit of phalo blue into my
into my dusk scene here. I'm so sorry. Hold on a second. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that, folks. Okay, just adding a little bit of phthalo blue. Uh, dashes, dashes, making a dash. A couple dashes here. Yeah, looking good. I like it. I hope I hope it's making sense sort of my vision for this card. Um a little bit more um, purple here. Yep. Okay, folks, we're getting near the end. <clears throat> this is some final blending here. And you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we know that that mountain, top of the mountain, I was using turquoise. I'm just going up with it. Up, up, up. Oh, my goodness, I love it. I think it looks so pretty, especially the sky. I think the sky looks really pretty. Um, let's see here. Do I need to do anything else to this? Um, well, take my blue and make sure I don't have too much color loaded on there. Just do a little bit more uh, blending here. This looks a little bit dark for me, like it doesn't have enough blue in it, like it's got too much gray. That's just the way I'm looking at it. So I'm going to dip back into my ultramarine blue and just add that little bit of that again. And I won't add any gray. I won't add any more gray. So you can see I'm putting it right on top. And it's coming through very clearly. I like that about the Pan Pastels. Um, I like the fact that you can go over it with a new coating of color. And um, it's not going to... Like the color underneath of it sort of goes away in a way. I don't know like if that's a technical artistic way, whatever, of saying it. I'm sure it's not. But um, sometimes when you're doing ink blending... It, it blends, it creates a new color, right? So I like this because I don't know why, but to me, it seems like it's not, it's not necessarily creating a new color. It's giving us a covering over what I previously had um, put down on the card. And that's what I was looking for. I was looking, it's not like to cover it, like to cover it up in a way because it got a little bit too gray for me and I want it to look more blue. Blue Ridge Mountains. Smoky Mountains are part of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Well, there's some mountains back here, too, that I didn't see. And it appears that I missed some greenery. So I need to take a, another, another uh, dab at my green here. Okay, that's better. All right, yay. Okay, now, now I'm going to grab my Misty. I've already loaded the sentiment. I loaded it up and lined it up to the spot that I wanted it just to make sure that I had, had it lined up right and I wasn't going in crooked. 
because, you know, there's nothing worse than working on a card for 45 minutes and then you go to put your sentiment on and, like, I've done this many times, I put the sentiment on crooked. So I'm trying to avoid that. Okay, so where's my misty? Here it is. All right. And... Now, we've got our card base. I'm going to trim this down a little bit, so I'm just making sure I have this lined up where it needs to be for the trim down. Okay, that looks good. And I'm going to be using Versifying Claire Nocturne. This is a really nice, you know what, actually I'm going to use Twilight which is the bluish, but these little holders for your ink pads are ingenious. You can get these from Blue Knight Rubber Stamps, okay? And basically when you go to open up your pad, you have something to hold it with and it keeps your fingers from getting ink all over it. You know, trying to hold that pad sometimes can be really tricky, especially some of the way, the way some of the pads are made. I hope this is a nice choice with going with the Twilight instead of the Nocturne. Oh yeah, that looks really, really pretty. Wet time, I am afraid I will trust in thee. This is a Bible verse that I like and I thought would look good. And for the person that I am attending, intent, intending to send it to, I think it will be a welcome message. So... Somebody who needs a little bit of a pick-me-up and going through a time that, you know, is fraught with, you know, concern and uncertainty at this time. All right. And then the birds. So we're going to finish it off with some birds. These will definitely be in black ink. Um, this Birds 2 set, it even has a little hummingbird. How cute is that? We're going to use is, is the three birds together. So I'm going to grab my stamp block. Get my birds ready. And I like to stamp on a piece of paper first. Just to just to help familiar re-familiarize re myself as to how the stamp is oriented and sort of the direction that I need to go. Here's my Nocturne ink. Yep, I'm glad I did that or I would have put them on upside down. Looks like they go this way, folks. Yep. All right, now where to put the birds? And then of course I could put more than one of them on. Yep, how about Hardest part is deciding where to position the birds. Okay, some here. And then maybe just one by itself. Instead of using the three. Let's go ahead and see. This is a pretty bird. Maybe flying sideways. Yeah, at an angle. This is like my favorite one. I use it all the time. All the time I use it. Oops. I didn't mean for him to be going up and down like that. Oh, darn it. He was supposed to go sideways and I kind of made him go up and down. Oh well, it's all right. That's how birds fly. Now this one will put him sideways. Oh, I keep doing it the wrong way. So 
I'm done. Done with the birds. Obviously, I am not good at stamping birds today. And I, otherwise, they just look like they're flying up out of the mountains. Like, you know, when, when you scare birds and they fly up out of the woods. That's what happened. The birds got scared and they flew up in the air. That's why they're all facing in that direction. All right, now I need to get some of my, get my trimmer out, trim this down, and then mount it onto a card base, and then we'll be done. Oh boy, I chopped that down. Didn't mean to chop it down so much. Boy, I'm really screwing up here at the end. Okay, let's be a little bit more careful, Tracy. Okay, better. Okay. Now, pan pastels do have to be sealed in order to um, not smear. And I use, I was using hairspray because that's what others had been using and I had seen people using it. But then I purchased some Acrylon sealant and I like it better than the hairspray. This is just personal preference. So I'm not going to mount this onto the card base right now, but I'm going to show you what color I am going to use to mount it on to give you an idea of what this finished card base will look like. Oh, that's another card that I made. I was wondering why it felt so thick. Okay, so we've got this navy blue. Okay, and we're just going to um, all right. Get you a close up here so you can see. There you go. I think it turned out really nice. I want to say thank you very much for watching the video, learning about pan pastels, and learning a little bit on how you can apply them to your scenery cards. I hope you found this um, to be a helpful video, and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Um, we'll see you next time, everybody. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.